third night of this Cardinal Forum that I call Meet the Candidates. And uh, it's been a, a pretty good, uh, um, I guess, uh, it, it, many people have been to join in at this. Just tonight we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 people. So that's pretty good. I'm very impressed with the Cardinal District. Uh, of course, the majority of them are past governors. <laughs> so so that, that shows you the, the dedication of uh, individuals that have uh, been in the leadership role here in the Cardinal District. Uh, they they uh, still give and they still care about Civitan and Civitan International very much. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna introduce Marta Ford and she's gonna tell us about herself, uh, her history in Civitan and um, about what she hopes to do if she becomes president. So Marta, the floor is yours, thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, as you hear, heard, my name is Marta Ford and um, this is gonna be fairly informal tonight because that's who I am. I am your everyday worker bee in the trenches of a tan. Um, so I'm gonna tell you my history. In 1981, I was a young, I'll, you know, say that again, young um, divorced mother with two sons and they were six and nine years old. And my mom had recently joined and helped charter a Civitan Club in Lansing called the Sundowner Civitan Club. And she came to me and she said, Marta, um, I think you need Civitan. And she said, and I think Civitan might need you. So 39 years later, 39 years, I still need Civitan. And I hope I can bring something to our international board. Um, some more of my history. In 1981, Carol Walters joined the Sundowner Civitan Club. So we have a connection in Civitan that is 39 years long. Um, I jumped on the bandwagon and starting to get involved right away from building floats, dancing on tables with John Walters until Carol kicked us off. Um, you know, we just had a lot of fun and it was something I wanted to share. But as a single parent, um, my boys went everywhere with me. They went to my meetings. They went to the service projects because we were a family in Civitan. Both of my parents were Civitans. Um, I wasn't involved in the district or international level in the early days because I was involved with my family. Um, but as my boys got older, of course they joined Junior Civitan. And I'm so proud to say they were both junior governors. And so for me, the first creed I learned was the junior Civitan Creed because I was the junior um, advisor and then I was a junior chairperson. So junior Civitan was my, my heart. And I always knew I wanted to be on the international board. I wanted to be international president, but the timing wasn't right. Um, so I waited. I waited until 2011 and I ran for um, governor of the North Central District. Now, prior to that, I had held director positions on the district level. Um, I did convention planning, a uh, lot of things in the district before I decided I could run for governor. And the reason I waited is that in January of 2012, I retired. And so I knew that being governor was going to take a lot of my time and effort, and I wanted to give it 100%. So I retired in January, and then I took office October of 2012. I was um, governor from 2012 to 2013, and as my governorship was coming to an end, I still was serving international, um, I was approached by Stacy Sable and asked to be on the training um, academy for governors and governor elects. And so I know I've met several of you in that position. Um, 
So from um, 2000 and um, whatever year it was, 14 to 2019, last year. Last year I trained in Atlanta, Hot Atlanta, and I trained at the International Convention. And because I was announcing that was my last training, I will tell people I learned more from the people that came to my training sessions than I ever gave them. I was a facilitator. We trained each other. We had newbies and we had some repeats and we worked together and it was amazing what people could come up with and how me just being there, asking a few questions, how everything just came together. And so training um, those years for me, um, yep, I gave up some weekends in the summer. I did some traveling and gave up some vacation time with my family because I felt it was so important to do that. So I really have been involved on the international level for a number of years since I was governor. Um, in 2017, I was elected as um, international director. And I... I got to serve with my fellow Carol Walters in a governor position and also in a director position. And Carol can attest, or she can't, that um, I'm not one to not ask questions. I don't always go with the flow. I don't believe that change for the sake of change is always good. I do believe that when change is needed, we need to act on it. Um, you know, I waited until I felt the time was right for me to run for international president. And I think the time is right. The last international president from my district was Polly Mooney Norman. And that's not her last name anymore. <laughs> um, and that was 30 years ago. I'm ready. I feel like I've been trained and I feel like a president does not run the show by herself or himself. You have to rely on the knowledge and the people that you're working with. You have to rely on your governors. You have to rely on staff because they're there every day. You know, you're here for a couple of years. And so my thought is that I can't guarantee what I can or can't do because that's politics. And I can say what I'd like to do. I could say what I'd like to see happen, but I can't guarantee those things would happen. Obviously, we need growth. Obviously, we need to share who we are better. And I think that's happening through social media. I mean, all of a sudden I'm seeing posts from all over um, of Civitans. So, you know, those are things that are really important. I can say that I don't have all the answers. And if I told you I did, then that wouldn't be the truth. I can say that I'm not afraid to ask questions. And I'm not afraid to talk to people. And if you were at the convention last year, I had a wonderful job of interviewing Dr. Powell. And that was so fun and so exciting for me. And um, it felt natural to me because I love what we do for our research center. I love what we do in our communities. I love Civitan, just as you do, or you wouldn't be here today you know, your third or fourth, fifth day in, in as many days of the week so far. I think since Saturday, you've probably been meeting almost every day. So your passion is what leads me, or the passion of Civitan is what leads me to want this job. And I, I think I'm ready. I probably wouldn't have thrown my hat in if I didn't. So, um, one of the things I'd like to say is a little bit of our junior Civitan creed, because I know that you know our senior creed, but this is the creed I learned first, and I'm not going to repeat it all. But part of it goes like this. I seek to meet the needs of our world, to be progressive in a world of change with compassion.
compassion and understanding for the values and the traditions of the past. I value our traditions. I, trust me, I knew this convention needed to be canceled, but I am sad that we aren't going to be there to share some hugs and share some stories. And, um, but I, it is what it is. The importance is that we're safe, that we're staying home and staying safe so that we can go out another day and do the work of Civitan. And people are doing work and volunteering in other ways. And that's what we do. We help our community in any way we can. So that's all I got. Um, I'd be happy to answer some questions if you have some. Okay, well, let's, uh, let me look around here and see if anybody has any questions. Um, Tony, I, I know you got missed the first couple nights. Did you want to ask her any questions tonight? <laughs> go ahead and unmute yourself. Hold on. There you go. You're good. Oh. I'll ask the same question I asked candidates, yeah, primarily with the uh, the research center, Civitan Research Center, and the situation is every time they develop something or uh, news release, it's never associated with Civitan. It's always either with the University of Alabama, okay, and there's a lot of value when they do something and if we're attached like on their coattails that people can give, give realize that who we are and if you look around a lot of people don't know who we are even though in dayton for example we've been around for a hundred years next year will be a hundred years so there's a lot of um uh things there are a lot of things many things that the research center is doing and my question to all of you is would you have a plan to make civitan uh, marketing our name and what we do along with the research center have you thought about that i think it's well you know <laughs> We've been around for over a hundred years and yes. people say, what's, what's Civitan? What's Civitan? Um, I think Dr. Powell um, would be, you know, this is just a couple of years that he's been working with us and he truly appreciates what we do for them. Um, I, I know Scarlett's talked to him about our commitment monetarily and where we're at. Um, I would like to see something like that happen. I would like to say, Yes, they will use our name more because we give them money. Um, I couldn't guarantee it, but I would say if I were president that I would try to work directly with Dr. Powell to see what we need to do to get our name out there a little better. Um, and uh, I've visited with him on more than one occasion. And so, I think, you know, he has a lot on his plate, new on the job, but I think that he is a man that listens well and he knows what our intentions are. Mm -hmm. And we just would like to get a little thank you or a little public acknowledgement for what we do. So. Well, something uh, I in my mind is, have we ever asked and say, you know, the more civitans we get, the more funds we could provide. Right, absolutely. Just ask, just ask them the question. Ask the right. doctor next time you talk to him, you know, uh, some of us feel that uh, the more we're associated with your releases, Civitan is with their, with their releases and research, the more opportunity we have of getting more members and uh, raising more funds for your research. I think that's a great idea. You know, and even Tony, um, if I'm not elected, or, you know, I think that is something great for you to bring up to International at this time, because everything we're doing with them is via social media like this. And right. um, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I'd be willing to let Scarlett know right now 
um, what Do your it. thoughts are. <laughs> All right. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. I know that uh, it looked like Ted, did you have your hand up, Ted Pagani? Go ahead and uh, ask your question, Ted. I was just wondering, uh, why can't we open up the voting for the international president to the different club members all over the world instead of just the people there in the convention at the convention? Okay, that's a good question. Um, right now, our bylaws don't allow that. Our policy and bylaws dictate how voting can happen. Otherwise, we would be voting this year for the international president instead of taking it next year to Florida. Um, mm -hmm. So if a club is in good standing and you're at the convention, you get a vote or two or depending on your numbers. But um, because there's nothing in our bylaws that address that, we cannot go ahead and say it's okay. So what would happen is if the board brings together something or if someone proposes something to the board or asks them, could you address this issue? Um, they can write a proposed change in our bylaws, but a bylaw has to be ratified at the convention. Oh. So I'm guessing there's going to be some recommendations for if this were to ever happen again, that we can have a bylaw that would cover that. But right now, because there's nothing that covers it under our bylaws or policy, this was the only thing they could come up with. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, I have a couple. Okay, go ahead, um, Jim. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carol cut it back from 17. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she still loves you. <laughs> what ideas do you have to better differentiate and expand the young professional segment of Civitan membership? <laughs> Okay, for me, that's a tough question because, all right, I'm just going to put it out there. It's not something I truly believe in, you know? I get it that we want to have young people in our organization. When we talk young professionals, we're talking 20s, 30s, right? Even My the 40s seem young. <laughs> okay, Absolutely. <laughs> So my family members that fit into the age group have more discretionary money than I ever thought of having. Mm -hmm. And if it, it comes down to dues, you know, I think, you know, meeting separately, having your own special type of meetings, that's all great. If you want to, you know, meet at a bar restaurant, um, some, something social and do a project, but, the difference in my understanding is money. And to me, um, for $10, we pay $10 a month. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, 30 cents a day. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, to, to clarify, you know, I mean, what you're addressing is, is dues. What I'm looking at is how do we attract people in that age group? The young okay. professional club structure was something that was invented and, and I would right. say destroyed by Civitan International. Uh, and and so now we don't have a truly a young professional okay. group. Okay, so how do we attract young professionals? Um, I'm fortunate enough to say that I have some of my prior junior Civitans as members of my club. Mm -hmm. And um, they came to us because they liked the project we were doing. Mm -hmm. We involved them. Um, we asked them to join us on a few things. They bring some energy that we didn't have, and we needed them, and they knew that. And I think that's one of the reasons they joined is because we showed them that we truly needed them. Not that we just needed them to come to a meeting and be there at a meeting, but we needed them to help with the projects because we aren't getting any younger. Mm -hmm. And um, when I think about joining Civitan, I was 28, 28 when I joined Civitan. That's pretty young. Mm -hmm. 
It was pretty young. And there were a lot of people that were older, but they were giving me something I needed. So maybe our clubs need to make sure that they know they're welcome and their families are welcome. And I think that's something we're talking about is some type of a family discount, some type of a family that can join Civitan. And, but then the clubs have to buy into that plan. They have to want to let families come to their meetings. Is that better? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, you can take the, the, the question number of different ways. Uh, I, I sure. they preferred the second one to the first more positive. There you go. Now I have a second question. Yep. Do you have any thoughts on how to identify and establish a Civitan International fundraiser to replace the Claxton fruitcake and the declining candy box sales? Not that you have to have the product or service, but do you have an idea on how to identify and establish? Well, I've seen Civitan International offer some things out there, but they're not, they're unique to that area. You know, they, if there is like a restaurant or a chain or something, it may be unique to that part of the country. Um, I personally, I think oh, instead of, you know, we're still getting some rebate from fruitcake. Mm -hmm. um, it's dropped dramatic, drastically, but we're still getting some. Um, I'm just not sure what product that we could offer. Mm -hmm. So another thought is maybe each club or each district could figure out that one item that those proceeds, that fundraiser would go to international. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of different things in, in our plates, but I'm not sure it would have to be, if we were going to do something as a fundraiser, like we have Claxton, mm -hmm. it would have to be something that could be shared throughout the country. Like we have a great place that does cookie dough. It's the best that's out there. And we make pretty good money on that. Um, but they can't service everyone. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure of what would be in the area. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, that's something I would ask my constituents. I'd say, Where's your, what, are, what ideas do you have, Tony? <laughs> you know, share some things with me because I'm not going to know all the answers. Mm -hmm. And that's when you go to the, your people and say, give me some ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody else has given me the, uh, the golden answer. But uh, I've, I've told others that I can remember uh, selling fruitcake back in Lansing on the street corners in the 1980s. Absolutely. And they told me then that the only people that bought fruitcake were the old people. Well, there, anyone that was old then probably isn't buying a lot of fruitcake now. And we're still selling. And we're still selling. <laughs> My mom eats enough for everybody, so it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. You had something else to add? You're off, Tony. Tony can't see has, has anybody ever gone back to Claxton and asked them if they would like to re uh, in re involve Civitan again? Maybe what they've they're, they've done is not working for them. Um, we have approached them. They don't need us. We put their name out there. Um, we put Cla Claxton. You know, in the marketplace, Civitan made Claxton, basically. And now they don't need us. Now they wholesale to any store they want to. They don't, you know, it was the gentleman's agreement that Civitan was going to get a lot of proceeds from Claxton. And gentleman that made that agreement is no longer um, holding the reins of the organization they really don't need us. You know, they work with me in the, the, uh, the zone manager just retired from the Dayton area. But for the last three or four years, we've shipped over 6,000 pounds each, uh, e each year to two different locations. And then they distribute yep. it to their uh, 
uh, stores. And don't, don't get me wrong, Tony. Yeah, they still they still support um, individual districts and clubs, but they don't need international because they're going. Everything's direct, you know. All the contracts that international was doing before, all of those, they didn't allow them to go on with that, whether it be Publix or whatever the case was. Um, now they're still working with individual clubs, individual districts for fruitcake but they don't need international, nor do they intend to change that. I know that we've approached them on more than one occasion. We need to start our own fruitcake business. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Okay, well, uh, I have a question, Marta. Um, junior Civitans, uh, it seems that we don't do a very good job of transitioning junior civitans to uh, adult clubs. Do you have any ideas about how we could improve that? Well, <clears throat> um, yeah, give them about six years. No, I just, uh, because when they're junior civitans, their last year is when they come out of high school. And then they're all dispersing, going different directions, um, going to college, going to the military, um, going into to work. And um, I, we did have two 19-year-olds that joined our club because we were offering them something they wanted. But um, I think on the whole, it takes a little while before they are back and ready. Um, so this is what I would say. A couple of my very favorite best friends' um, daughter was a junior civitan, and they loved what she was doing so much that they joined civitan. And we just Bob and Barb Harris, who the Walters know very well, have moved to Pennsylvania, um, but still, they came to us through their daughter. So that's a place where you could maybe not get the junior in, but you could be marketing their family. You know, um, the other thing is, is once they are done and they're back, that's when you, and, and stay in touch with them. You know, how are you doing? How school, you know, be friends with them on whatever social media they use. And then when they're come back and they're ready to be back volunteering because they were juniors because they liked that, situation, then I think you have a possibility of, of a member joining. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Doug, you have any questions this evening? I can't hear you, buddy. John, could you turn his mic on? You, you talk about only old folks loving fruitcake. My five-year-old grandson loves them. In fact, we usually save about five uh, cakes for him and uh, give it to him at Christmas time. I've never seen a kid so enthusiastic about them. But, uh, both he and I like them. But uh, so there are some. Our granddaughter likes them. Yeah. My my granddaughter likes it because her her grandma great and she just calls her great. Mm -hmm. loves fruitcake so grandma great shares her fruitcake with her grand great granddaughters mm -hmm. and they like it <laughs> okay is there anybody else with any questions before i go ahead and wrap it up okay i don't see any hands raised okay well marta you know i want to thank you for uh being here with us tonight and um giving us some time to get to know you. Uh, I got to see you with uh, Dr. Powell at the International Convention. Convention, You did a wonderful job. You really did. I, I thought it was outstanding. And um, what we'll do is we'll plan to do this again before the convention next year so that uh, the three candidates uh, can uh, get back in touch with us. And I'm sure you'll remember what we talked about and you may have stuff to add um, about how the world's changed from now to the time when you guys get ready uh or we all get ready to go to jacksonville so uh 
Any final okay. comments, uh, Marta, before I uh, close? Just, I just want to thank um, you and um, your district, your members, for opening their homes um, for me tonight. I truly appreciate it, and I truly appreciate what you do for Civitan. And um, I thank you, and you know I'll be asking for your vote. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Marta. And I also want to thank all of you Civitans, you wonderful people here tonight. And uh, I just ask that you please be healthy and stay safe. Uh, don't be running in neighborhoods, Al Harmon. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, uh, That's what and, I do. Uh, <laughs> so again, uh, I just want to say good night and thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, Marta, is there a way yes. that we could get the senior clubs who sponsor juniors to extend an invitation to those juniors to join on a student basis or whatever while the kids are away so that they still retain a connection to Civitan? That might bring them back then in six years, even if it's just junior dues, which are scaled back anyway. Right. Um, Send them birthday cards, send them whatever. I think your thing about keep in touch with them, maybe that might bridge that gap. We can't trust that the juniors are going to go join a campus club because there aren't enough. And no, the juniors they're not. go all kinds of different directions. Right, right. But I wish we yeah, could get the I'll... senior clubs that sponsor juniors to hang on to the juniors for a year or two that way. The kids might become interested enough and they will presume, if they're in college, they will presumably come home for the summers where your club is. They could come to right. some of your club projects. And, and Carol, I would say that, you know, keep them um, in mind for those projects. You know, not, yeah. um, I'm not saying that maybe you should pay their dues and put them on your um, roster because then you're going to be adding and subtracting, you know. Yeah. But, but I would say that definitely – um, keep them in mind because when they're home, they're going to be wanting to see their friends and things too. But right. you know, right. if if they volunteer, that's yeah. what it's all about. So yeah, and that might keep their interest peaked for another Absolutely. couple of years until they get to that point where they're able to join, or they can find right. a new activity and club where they move. Right. Exactly. Bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Good Thank you, John. You, you too, Carol.